If you're new to Destiny, you're going to reach a stage in game where some content will reward players with extra loot if done solo. These contents aren't to be taken lightly and will require the users to have an optimised build that will not only allow you to survive X amount of damage, but also allow you to survive the worst that Destiny can offer. But there is an easy way around this and it's one of the most oldest techniques you can rely on wherever you go. Simply go invisible. Now hunters aren't always the best when it comes down to optimal DPS for endgame content or group survival to some degree, but they do have the ability to go invisible and save themselves or others from a certain wipe. Which is why today's build is going to focus on a simple setup that will not only allow you to take on whatever content you like solo, but will truly carry you from master to grandmaster if you're up for the task. If this gets your rocks off, which I'm sure it will, then stick on by for the rest of the video and watch how you can go from being a scrub to a god in seconds. Now, like usual, before we head in, if you do enjoy the video, then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, as I would really appreciate it. With that out of the way, the subclass we'll be using is the Hunter's Way of the Pathfinder for complete invisibility usage and wide team support on the whole. This subclass is fantastic if you go solo or in group as the subclass benefits you get will activate either way. Take the Vanishing Smoke ability. This one ability will provide the Heart of the Pack buff that will grant you increased weapon haste, mobility, recovery and resilience, all of which can be provided non-stop if you spec heavily into strength. We then also have the Combat Provision ability that will grant us melee energy from damage combatants with grenades and vice versa and then combine that with the lockdown perk for longer grenade duration and you can pretty much take on any champion solo with ease. Now here's where it gets interesting though. Quite a while back we received a patch that went through a wide number of changes to exotics with both buffs and nerfs across the board. On the patch notes, it buffed the following exotic rather than forfeit by applying increased the bonus invisibility duration, the melee regeneration speed now increases based on the number of enemies near you, and while you're invisible, your recovery is greatly increased and your weapons reload more quickly. This, combined with the subtree perk, Heart of the Pack, and its benefits, is basically giving you a supreme bundle of buffs that drastically increases your survival rate. From the gameplay shown, you'll see that the moment I use my melee and go invisible, I will be able to get my smokes back within the duration of my visibility time, while also having quick recovery speed and being able to get back into action. All of this through two methods will overall allow you to come out on top, no matter the situation you are in. Having constant invisibility at hand will allow you to maneuver around maps and get better angles and tough combatants, or you can use it to close a gap and finish combatants quickly when no one is looking. This overall is helpful as it has generally helped me survive lethal encounters to where I'm trapped but there's an opportunity to escape if I go invisible. Now how you go about using this will be down to you and honestly it's going to be down to the scenario you'll end up in. One thing to note though, it is very important that you have your melee at 90 to 100 so you can get your smoke grenades back in seconds. Though you have your subclass perks in action that will be helping you, having this stat maxed out can literally mean life or death in some situations. You may even be able to get away with 80 but this will of course depend if you have other mods available to support this slot. You also want to make sure your discipline is at 60 so you can benefit from combat provision and lockdown, both who will allow you to dispatch major combatants in one go and provide energy back from doing so. For weaponry, the only thing you're going to really need here is the Arbalest for its incentric anti-barrier capability. Thanks to the new buff, you can now destroy barrier champ shields which make them one of the best exotics to bring with you for endgame content of any type. Now remember, this weapon can one-shot combatant shields and then increase kinetic damage to 50% for a short duration via the Disruption Break perk. Now apply the Parkour Deconstruction mod for that debuff on combatants and you practically become unstoppable against all shielded combatants, no joke. This works wonders against champions as that extra precision damage you can do can really help with saving heavy ammo and considering how powerful it is against all shielded combatants, you can guarantee an easy kill using it. For secondary, we have the Point of the Stag bow which is an art precision frame bow that was a ritual weapon from Season of the Worthy for Iron Banner. Now I'm not entirely sure if the questline is still available or not, but if you can access it, I would highly recommend you get the bow. The bow has multiple perks you can pick and choose freely, which allows a number of customizations for the user in endgame, although you may be going with Archer's Tempo and Volvo Weapon for the best customization. 
I personally chose the bow because of the warper option, which will be providing me with an extra damage against bosses to mini bosses, which is suitable for a solo build and a great bump in damage at a safe distance. You can, however, go and use the Wolf Tone Draw Bow from this season, which is similar in frame type, but can offer you Shoot to Loot and Dragonfly. Both these perks are the gold draw you'll want to farm for, as Shoot to Loot will allow you to grab ammo at a safe distance, while Dragonfly will get rid of the minor combatants in one blast. Now, unfortunately, you cannot get Warp on a weapon, but you shouldn't avoid getting said weapon for safekeeping anyways. It could be really useful down the line. Now, Heavy isn't anything specific as any weapon you're choosing is viable here, but I found that using the Severe with the Cold Steel perk is fantastic against champions once they are stunned, as you can apply a Freeze debuff on them and then use the Frozen Moment to do extra damage or just limit their movement. This, of course, will vary on the endgame level of combatants you face, so it may be wise to use a Reed Regret with Vorpal as backup. For stats, your main focus will be both the Discipline and Strength stat, as these two areas will be used constantly for providing invisibility and increased grenade lockdown for the user. Now, as mentioned earlier with our subclass, we are able to improve the two abilities simultaneously and gain enough advantage to where we can lock down areas with ease. Do remember, we will want to have around 80 to 100 for strength, so we can get back our smoke grenades in mere instants once it becomes active. For this, having the Radiant Light mod will help provide you with that extra plus 20 in strength for free, and the mod is pretty handy for getting charged with light quickly once you activate your super. This, for example, will activate your Protective Light mod and give you that extra layer of protection the moment you're in your super and vulnerable. Having the Invigoration and Absolution perk is also handy, as it will be reducing your ability cooldown further once you collect Orbs of Power, which will be plenty of. This is all you'll need for the strength stat, as the subclass and graviton will be filling in the rest from here on out, so just make sure that the stat alone is at the relevant level as discussed. Your discipline stat should be at around 60 now, as this too will affect how fast you can get your melee stat back. You won't need to use specific mods to get this ability back quickly, as this will be passively coming back to you, and although it is an important stat, you don't really need to fully invest in this since we have enough investment available to support it. Now, you can, however, add in the Elemental Orders mod, so you can get Elemental Wealth to drop for you and your allies. Now, although it's only one, and you only get a bit of energy back, this one world can come in clutch if you accidentally throw your smoke grenade and waste it, and you just need a quick boost to get you through. Now, leftover-wise, we have the Ashes to Ashes mod for quickly garnering super energy via grenades. We then have protected life for that extra layer of defense the moment we hit critical health, and then we have particle deconstruction for applying an extra layer of debuff and damage when using our fusion to linears on combatants. Now, with everything covered from subclass down to stats, here's what it all looks like compiled into one. For head, we have discipline, ashes to assets, and elemental orders mod. Arm, we have discipline, fastball, and charge with light mod. Chest, we have strength. Like I said, down the times two on protective light mod. Leg, we have strength, absolution, invigoration, and radiant light mod. And cloak, we have discipline and particle deconstruction mod. So, Graviton Forfeit has been in game for a very long time and has had its use, but it was easily overlooked by other better exotics that offered more to the table than what Graviton offered. Take Ominoculus. That one exotic made going invisible for the whole team worth it, while Graviton was only really good for certain solo content, and even then, it could be opted into with something else. But now with the recent buff to them, they truly have a place in game while offering solo players something to work with. Now both Omni and Graviton have their pros and cons, and both of them offer something worthwhile when you build into them, so it's kind of hard to say this one exotic is better than the other, which is perfect as it gives players more options in terms of picking and choosing for whatever counter you're in. Now, if you choose Garoton, then it tells me you're more of a solo player who wants every single buff to focus on you and you alone, while Omni is more of a team tactic exotic, but can fit a solo player slot if they choose. With the recent buff to Graviton, solo players have a much easier time to stay invisible as long as they like, and can use this through a number of ways from simply sneaking past a group of combatants, to getting a better angle on a mini boss, or even use it to revive a buddy in a far to reach area. The exotic now allows you to do better when on your own. Being invisible is one of the most powerful abilities that hunters can use and abuse, 
and this can help with making tough areas that are designed for multiple players easier for solo players alone. Your mobs are pretty simple and don't need anything too complicated to build around them. Your weapons now will cover a number of areas which will allow you to overcome all. Your abilities have rapid cooldown designed for keeping you on top and your gear used can be swapped in and out of favour for stronger mods such as Phantom Might if you wish. Simply put it, no matter what content you're in, from Easy, Legend, Master to Grand Master, this build will allow you to go around the BS and increase survivability by 10 folds. Now that's something you want to have considering that the Void rework is just around the corner and we may get some combos that make going invisible even more beneficial. But until then, enjoy this build as it's going to get better soon once Witch Queen comes around the corner. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content. If you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all next one.